fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> champion of law and order the early West ever knew. He fought crime and criminals through the length and breadth of seven states. But justice meant more to him than the letter of the law, and time after time he saved innocent men from death or imprisonment. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Seward's Ranch! Silver, Old Missouri opened the door that led into Mustang Mag's kitchen, cautiously looked inside, then called softly to Mag that... Mag! Hi, Mag! Oh, my gracious, you give me a scare. Thunderation, can't you make a noise when you come around so the body wouldn't get scared half out of a skin? Hush! Is Sky Pilot around? Oh, it's him you're dodging, huh? I don't know where he is. But if you're coming in, hurry up about it and close the door. You're letting in half the flies in creation. You don't mind if I smoke, do you? Huh? Me? Ain't nothing to me if you want to poison yourself. Swallow arsenic if it'll make you feel any better. The sky pilot's a gimmick. Again, swallowing arsenic? Well, that ain't hard to understand. You know that ain't what I mean, Mag. He's again smoking. He caught me at it yesterday. That's why I never got my work done. Took him the better part of the afternoon to tell me how sinful I was. Just the afternoon? Well, that goes to show he ain't so well acquainted with you yet. Oh, now, Mag. Sin and laziness, Missouri. You're cram plum full of both of them. You think the sky pilot don't all the time be hollering at a feller? It hurting you any? The day before yesterday, he caught me talking to that doggone mule you brought off of Jake Nugent. <laughs> now I ask you, Mag, how's a fella to talk to a mule? Polite and respectful? Shucks, the darn critter wouldn't have no notion what you would get in there. And the sky pilot heard you, huh? I don't like to bring there. You shouldn't never let him come to stay here. Why, Missouri, outside of being a mite stubborn, I ain't never seen a more useful mule than that one. Well, I'm talking about the sky pilot. Then speak up plain. That's what I'm trying to do, doggone it. He's again smoking. He's again cussing. You shouldn't carry a shooting iron. You oughtn't to ride a horse on Sunday. I'll bet he ain't even so sure a fellow ought to go around with his shirt sleeves rolled up. It being kind of immodest, the mule. No, the sky pilot. You better watch yourself, Missouri. You're letting yourself get a mite out of hand. Oh. No. As for the sky pilot, well, I'd say most times he's right. I don't hold with smoking myself. 
so I've never made a point of it. And there's a sight too much cussing and gunslinging going on. Nope. It ain't his opinions that are wrong. It's the way he goes about spreading them. He just ain't caught on to the knack of it yet. Like cutting out a calf for Brandon, there's a right and a wrong way to it. Man, you're just on his side because I ain't. And I'm telling you plain, if he stays on here much longer, I'll go clean loco. You're that already. Now shut up and give me a hand here. You can put this bread that's ready for baking atop the oven. Yes, sir. Careful you don't drop it. Me drop anything? <laughs> Why, I'm the carefulest fella in six states. I never... Gosh. Missouri, you old fool, look what you've done. Now just look at the mess you've made. I... Uh, <laughs> Good morning, Reverend. <laughs> What a shame. Oh, I'll clean it up. Uh, did I startle you, Missouri? <laughs> Shucks, no, I just, uh, that Do is... Do I uh, smell smoke? Uh, from the oven, most likely. Oh, a pipe? No. Do you uh, know to whom it belongs? Oh, my gosh, I ain't the slightest idea. I have two, Missouri, it's yours. Mine? But I never loaned it to nobody. I... You were just now smoking it. Me? Yes, you. Certainly you can remember a simple thing like that, can't you, Missouri? I, I guess if Mag says I was smoking, I must have been. <laughs> uh, but ain't it funny how things can slip your mind? Why, only the other day I was... Missouri? Uh -huh. Yesterday you gave me your solemn word that you were finished with tobacco. Uh, did I? You did. Now, today I find that you were attempting to deceive me. Missouri, what am I to think of you? I tell you, Reverend, there ain't much use you trying to reform me. I'm too old. It'd just be wasting your valuable time. Now, why don't you try it out on the young folks? See? <laughs> like Mag there, for instance. That'll be enough out of you, Missouri. Uh, but Mag... Well, let's see who that was just rolled up outside. Yes. Mag... Well, glory be, if it ain't Rod Sampson. Rod. Oh, Mag, you gotta hide me. You just got to. The sheriff's right after me for something I swear I never done. You gotta hide me and my horse, too. Oh, please, Mag, please. You heard him, Missouri. Hustle right outside. Unsaddle Rod's horse and turn it out with the others where it won't be noticed. You betcha. Oh, I must say now, that. Now, don't this bother is a... me now, Reverend. This is important. Rod, how far behind is the sheriff? Yeah. It'll be along most any minute. Then get in that closet there and close the door behind you. Mag, I, I give you my word I ain't guilty. Of course you ain't. You think I have to ask questions to know that? Now get in the closet, like I said. Oh, bless you, Mag. I won't never be forgetting this. Hey, shut the door. Mag. Well? I trust that you're acquainted with a citizen's duty toward the law. I trust I am. What about it? Very obviously, you intend to forget that duty. You're harboring a confessed fugitive. He... He's my friend. But your duty... I don't know how you figure things. But after you've been in the West for a while, you'll learn that a friend's somebody you don't never go back on. Well, a very dangerous attitude of mine. But it's my mind, such as it is, and it's my attitude. And I ain't apologizing for neither. I'm sorry to see you taking this tone. We can talk it out some other time. Uh, don't tell me you unsaddled raw horse in this space of time, Missouri. You couldn't. I give it to He can be trusted. I come back to tell you the sheriff's coming. He's right. There he is now. Then you let me handle this and keep your mouth shut. For all your practice, Missouri, you never did amount to much as a storyteller. I did. Quiet. Come in. Howdy, folks. Howdy, Howdy you, Sheriff. Sir. Howdy. Well, heavenly day, Sheriff. What brings you here? You ain't after me for taxes this time, are you? <laughs> nope. You can rest easy, Mag. I got other business. I ain't seen nothing to Rod Sampson, have you? You're joking? Nope. But Rod's place is clear the other side of Soda Springs. Say, you ain't after him for something, are you? Afraid I am, man. Oh, now you are joking. Nope, none at all. Ain't nothing the least funny about this. Rod's wanting a right serious charge. I thought I'd seen him head in here. What charge? Rustling. No. Yep. Mr. Seward swore out a warrant for him. Swears Rod's been stealing his cow. Says he's got a witness to it. So uh, I reckon Rod will have to go to jail. When you find him, Missouri. Oh! Well, uh, if you haven't seen him, he must have cut over to the north after I lost sight of him back at the gully. I'll have to keep moving or I'll lose too much time. You'll do better investigating Seward. I wouldn't take that high-binding polecat's word for the time of day. <laughs> Shouldn't let your disliking him affect your judgment any, Mag. Well? <clears throat> Pardon me. Huh? Do something? I, uh... 
I feel it my duty, Sheriff, as one who has the highest respect for the law. Sure, to... we all feel it's our duty, Reverend. And if anything should come up where we can be of any help, we'll be glad to. Well, uh, goodbye, Sheriff. Next time. Now, you one come... moment. Now, wait. I won't permit this. Sheriff, these people have made a fool of you. Now, don't go on if you look here. Tyler. The man you want, Sheriff, is in this house. He's here with the full knowledge of Mag and Missouri. You'll find him skulking there in that closet. Mm. Blast Careful, Rod. It wasn't our fault. I know it wasn't Mag. Neither was it Missouri's. Now, Rod, 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 the best thing you could do would be to hush your mouth and start marching. Come on. Uh, you understand, Sheriff, that if there's any reward, I couldn't accept it. Mister, you'd better understand something. Mm hmm? You just had to speak up and spoil everything, didn't you? Spoil everything? I knew all the time that Rod was here. I seen Missouri leading his horse away. Gosh. I seen the muddy tracks Rod left leading to that there closet door. But doggone it, I didn't want Rod caught any more than Mag did. And if you just had the sense to keep still, I could have done my duty and kept Rod from going to jail. Next time, don't you meddle. Well, the very idea. A doggone good idea, I'd call it. Now, do you see what I meant, Mag? I reckon I do. It seems that in this part of the country, not even the men sworn to uphold it respect the law. You know what they respect a doggone sight more? Well? Justice. And when laws get in the way of it, they'd better watch out. <laughs> Young Rod Sampson had been popular in the district, while Seward, the rancher who had sworn out the warrant for his arrest, was despised by everyone. Therefore, when the latter passed within hailing distance of Mag's ranch on his way to town, and met a group of cowboys coming from the other direction, the encounter led to interesting developments. Well, if there ain't Mr. Seward. And riding the top of a horse. Doggone if I didn't think snakes all crawl. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't you start nothing. What's the matter, Mr. Seward? You think you're the only fella can start anything? You live it through now. Don't you block that road. Oh, oh there. Ho, oh, oh. ho. You had Rod jailed. He never stole a cow in all his life. And when a coyote like you says he did, it just about proves he didn't. He did. He's a thief. And don't call a part of ours a thief. Fellas, what do you say we give Mr. Seward a little working over? Maybe it'll teach him not to be so careless who he accuses next time. Yeah. No, 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 wait, you can't. The law, you wouldn't dare. No, 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 please. Uh, uh, drag him off the horse. Just pull him down. Get his arm. No. Hey, watch out. The skunk's going for his gun. I'll fix you. I'll show you. It'll be self-defense. Watch out. He shot Lefty. With a yellow pull, cat, we ought to string him up. Lefty, where'd he get you? Oh, just my arm. But it burns like blazes. He might have killed you. It wasn't his fault. He didn't. Here's a rope. No, There's no, a tree no. over there. No. Come on, grab no, him. Please. We'll carry him there. No. Come on, Tim. A, a masked man with a red skin with him. Help! Help! This way. Help me. Help me. Get back. Stay away from here, stranger. They're button in. Shoot him. No. I'll get the engine. The masked fellow's mine. I fire up my hand. You can't get away with this, stranger. Ah! Up with you! Uh, Hold on! Come on, Silver! Come on, up, Scout! Head for Mustang Mag's place, Tabo! Uh -huh. You all right? I, they would have hugged me. I doubt it. I think they were trying mostly to scare you. They would have, I tell you. They would have. No, but things might have gone too far. There, place, straight up. Oh, oh, Scout! Oh, Silver! Oh, Silver! Oh, oh, oh. oh. Down with you. Uh, my, my horse. You can round him up later. If he doesn't return to your place by himself. Right now, you'd better stay out of sight. Have a great day. Hello, Mag. Oh. It's you, <laughs> you and Tonto. Who's this you got here? Seward. Some punchers were threatening to hang him. Seward. I want him to stay out of sight. Friend, are you? Yes, Mag. I know it ain't your style to let anybody get hurt if it can be helped. Well? But couldn't you have let Seward get hung just this once? The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. After the Lone Ranger had rescued the rancher Seward from a group of cowboys and had taken him to the home of Mustang Mag for protection, Tonto recaptured Seward's mount. At last, when the way seemed clear, the rancher made ready to leave. And... Well, I'll be getting along now. I won't thank you for nothing, Mag, because I savvy plain enough how you feel to admit. And a good thing you do. And you saved me from the cowboys, friend. And You're I... mistaken. No, but you did. They might have hung you me up. You misunderstood me. What I meant to say is that I'm not your friend. Yeah. I have good reasons for saying that. I came to your aid as I would have helped anyone else, no matter who or what he was. But I'll tell you something before you leave, so there'll be no further misunderstandings. Yeah. One of these days, you'll end behind bars. And I hope I'm the man who puts you there. <laughs> How do you like that, Seward? How do you take your straight talk? Yes. I have nothing to worry about. Time enough to stop worrying when I have to hide behind a mask to dodge the law. <laughs> right put out, Wardy. <laughs> Look at him. You know what he puts me in mind of? Nothing half so much as them white crawling things you find by turning over a rock. But he's dangerous in the way all cowardly men are dangerous. They substitute cunning for physical courage. You know, there's something that puzzles me about all this. What is it, Meg? I'll put you right on it. Underation, Missouri, won't you never learn to keep shut? Oh. No, what puzzles me is why Seward accused Rod of rustling. Just don't seem to be any reason for it. I have an idea. I know the reason. You do? I'll know more about... Pardon me. Sure. I would like to speak to this gentleman with you. Yes? Perhaps Mag or Missouri has mentioned me to you. I'm Jasper Kane. The Reverend Jasper Kane. Yes, they've mentioned you. I wonder... Would you mind very much telling me why a man of your apparent education has chosen the life of an outlaw rather than to abide by the rules of society? Uh, is it the easy money? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Reverend, this is one time you're barking up the wrong tree. Huh? <laughs> why, great land of Goshen. This man here is doing what you just wish you was doing. And he's doing it from here to the border while you ain't even got a good start yet in this here county. Him a crook. He packs more law in them two guns of his than all the lawyers west of the Mississippi could write down in a month of Sundays if they was to work overtime at it. But, but the mask... Kane, hey, you're an Easterner, aren't you? Oh, I have no reason to be ashamed of it. Of course not. But from the little mag in Missouri have told me... I've gathered that you're trying to force a point of view you gained in the East upon the people bred here in the West. I'm not sure I know what you mean. We'll put it this way. There's law and there's justice. In the East, the emphasis is upon the first. In the West, upon the latter. If you rigidly enforce the law, then you're bound to have justice. There have been cases where the one didn't follow the other. For instance, Rod Sampson. A warrant was sworn out for his arrest, and the law said that warrant had to be served. But everyone in this district is aware that Rod's arrest was unjust. It isn't for us to judge in these matters. That's the Easterner speaking. Where you come from, you scarcely know your next-door neighbors. Here, people know everyone from miles around. Mag probably is acquainted with everyone within a 500-mile radius of her ranch. Well? When you know people that well, Kane, you're qualified to judge from their characters whether or not an accusation of this nature is true. In the East, you wouldn't be so qualified. And your only course would be to depend upon the letter of the law and hope that it served justice. When you've realized that difference, I think you'll understand the people of this country better and have more success in your work. A barbarous theory. Doggone it, then! If you think as little of us as you say you do, why in Tunket do you hang around? For a very good reason, Missouri. Huh? It's just where I find persons as ignorant and uncivilized as you that there's the greatest need of my labor. Good day. What? What's that? He called me ignorant. He said oh, I was... Well, in your horns, Missouri. When he said you wasn't hardly civilized, he sure called a turn. Now look here, oh, man. Shop. Oh! But all joking aside, just what is a fella like that doing out here? Why don't he go on back east where folks wouldn't be all the time offending him? My land, it seems to me... He's good. honest, Meg. Well, but just And he's same. sincere. Those are qualities that are always useful anywhere. The West can use him. When he's learned to understand it. Which same he never will. Don't be too certain of that. Huh? Mag, I have an idea that Reverend Jasper Kane will change some of his opinions sooner than he thinks. (laughs) 
That evening, the masked man and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, were at their well-hidden camp, not far from Mustang Mag's ranch house. Tonto, did you find out the names of the two fellows who claimed they saw Rod stealing Seward's cattle? Uh Uh-huh. One feller named Blake, other feller named Shaw. Isn't Shaw a nester who's got a small place on Seward's range? Not right. And it's clear why Shaw would back Seward's story. If he didn't, Seward would throw him off his land. Uh But who's Blake? Him, Seward Foreman. So that's it. Both of Seward's witnesses, men who depend upon Seward for their living. Uh You and I know, Kima Sabe, that they lied. Others suspect it, but we know it. Well, them tell heap big lie. I wonder if they won't tell the truth with a little persuasion. Persuasion of the right kind. I'm positive Shaw would. How about Blake? What do you think of him? (laughs) Don't make him talk. Call, Scout. Here, Scout. Here, Silver. We ride. We're paying calls on Seward's two witnesses. (laughs) Me, Savvy. Yep. They'll learn a lesson from this, Tonto. And Seward and Kane with them. Not that good. Ready? Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. Hail, Silver. Away. Ask, man. Sean? That's me. Saddle your you... horse. You're coming with us. Hey, you can't do this to me. Let go. Get your hand off that bridle. Joe Blake, aren't you? You bet I am, Mr. Then Knight. You're riding. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scott. Come on. Let go, man. Let go. It's me, Mag. Well, I'll be switched. The masked man. Mag, listen closely. Tano has Seward's two witnesses at our camp. They don't know that he wouldn't harm them. And they're badly frightened men. I think we'll get confessions from them. Glory be. Things are going to happen. They'll happen fast. You'll have to know exactly what to expect. On the evening of the next day... A gathering of sober-faced men assembled one by one in Mustang Mag's parlor, much to the bewilderment of the Reverend Jasper Kane, to whom the proceedings were a mystery. When he asked questions, no one answered him. The group seemed to be waiting for a signal, a signal that came at last in the form of a loud knocking at the door. That must be them, all right. Come in. Get in there. Hey, let me go. What did you bring me here for? You ain't got no right to do this to me. I'll have the law on you. Hold him. I got the scum. Hey, what? what Quiet. You... Sit down. You... Sit down. What am I here for? Magby, masked man said you sent for me. Why? You're on trial, Seward. But I... T- for lying to get Rod Sampson jailed. And for shooting me. And for being a general, all-round, low-down sidewinder that ain't fit to decorate this county no more. No. No, you can't. You're not the law. Yes, yes, bet we ain't the law. We're the same as vigilantes. That's what we are. Oh, please, please. Uh, I've never harmed you. None of you. I've never done a thing. We know plenty you've done. There's likely more. Much more we'll never learn about. No, no, you can't the do that. The law has failed to punish you. Instead, it's holding an innocent man because of you. We're here to do what the law has not done. See that you get what you deserve. Oh, no, you're wrong. You're wrong, oh. The sky pilot's got a gun. Where'd he get it? You can't do this. I won't allow it. It's not legal. I told you once before, Kane, that we weren't interested in the law. We are interested in justice. This isn't justice, and I won't stand for it. Don't move. Not a one of you. I, I'll i shoot if you do. Why Be careful, you... Missouri. He means it. Seward. Yeah. Get out. Hurry. I'll hold him while you get away. Bring the sheriff here. Every one of these persons has broken the law and is liable to arrest. Hurry. Bring him as quickly as you can. I'll get him. I'll bring him here. You, you're a car, old Seward. There. You've let a guilty man escape. You've done exactly what I told you you would do. You followed the letter of the law and defeated justice. That's not true. No? Well, we had two witnesses here in this room who would have testified. They'd been given a chance. Come out here. Why, it's Mr. Shaw and Mr. Blake. Tell Kane what you know, or I turn you back to Tonto. No, please. That engine will you kill can't. us. You can't do that to us after you promise. Then talk. Did you see Rod Sampson steal cattle, or didn't you? Quickly. We... We didn't. We said that because Mr. Seward told us we had to. And I'll tell the rest of it. I'll tell you exactly why Seward wanted Rod jailed for rustling. 
It was because Seward's a rustler himself. And he thought that Rod had seen him at it. He wanted Rod discredited, so that anything he said would be ignored by the law. Then, then you were right. Seward, Seward lied. And how do you think I persuaded these fellows to tell the truth, Kane? By following the letter of the law? By handling them with gloves? So they could go on with their lies and keep an innocent man in jail? I did not. As I told you before, it's justice I wanted. I, I let him go. He'll never go to the sheriff. He'll run away. Maybe he won't be caught. You admit that this time we were right and that you were wrong? I... I do. And... And you have my word, gentlemen, that I will do everything in my power to see that Mr. Seward is brought back to... justice. It won't be necessary. Come in, Tonto. You too, Sheriff. Seward. Sure. Me and Tonto didn't let the skunk get far. We was waiting for him out there all the time. Tamed you down some, too, didn't we, Seward? You have nothing on me. We have plenty, Seward, now that Blake and Shaw have talked. Sheriff, you... You said you were waiting for him. How could you know that he... That he'd get a chance to escape? Well, to tell the truth, I didn't. It was a masked man that did. I reckon, Kane, he had you sized up pretty well. Kane, this whole thing was planned. Do you think you could have affected Seward's escape alone unless we permitted you? I knew how you'd react when you thought we were going outside the law. Missouri put that gun you're holding where you'd be sure to see it. I... Well, I... I guess there's nothing for me to say. Nothing? Nothing beyond the fact that I've been a fool. You made your point. I was wrong, and I admit it. And now... And now what? All that's left for me to do is resign and go back east, where I'm fitted. A man like me can be of no use here. You ain't stirring one step. Well, I should smile, you ain't. But why? What... Kane, you've passed the hardest test of all, just like the masked fella said you would. Test? Masked man? He said when it come right down to where you'd seen you was wrong, you'd be man enough to admit it. And by thunder, he was right again. You did. One hundred percent. And any fellow that ain't afraid to tell it when he's been wrong is a fellow I can tie to. You mean... You mean you really want me to stay? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. And Missouri and me will be to meeting every Sunday in the year. That there's a promise. Mag! <laughs> Copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.